Hello everybody, this is Cameron Gwynn. I actually don't want to wear these. Look too nerdy with them. And we're talking about Schoolboy Q today, so like, why would I want... Yeah, exactly. Hello everybody, this is Cam Gwynn talking to you. You stumbled upon the YouTube page that talks a lot about a little. This is Cam Gwynn Talks. We got another vinyl review today. Today, we got Crash Talk. Now, I mentioned on my TikTok that, you know, I'm a huge Schoolboy Q fan. I don't think he's underrated, but at the same time, I think he kind of gets overlooked occasionally. Um, this hat kind of means something, too. He just came out with a single this past Friday called Soccer Dad, Michigan Soccer. I'm a soccer guy. I like the song. Go check it out. But let's talk about Crash Talk, okay? This album came out in 2019, April 26th, to be specific, and it did actually get postponed. It was, I believe, supposed to come out in, like, November 2018, but Mac Miller died in September, and Schoolboy Q and Mac were, like, tight they were super good friends so he was kind of going through it when he died and you know he delayed the album so anyway another couple cool facts about this album it is his fifth studio album um baby keem and kendrick helped produce quite a few tracks on here kendrick is in quite a few tracks i don't know if that means he helps produce them or not it's all written in here so yeah without further ado though let's get into it track one gang gang now I wrote down that it's like kind of a typical Q, uh, Schoolboy Q sound. It's a little dark, but it's hype at the same time. But at the same time now, with this project, does Schoolboy Q really have a specific sound? I don't think so. But Gang Gang, you know, it's just kind of short. That's my only problem with it. So I got a 7, but it rolls right into track 2, Tails, very just like seamlessly, just perfect, flawless. And like I said, it's picking up, Tails is picking up right where Gang Gang uh, left off at. It's got a crazy transition. It's kind of a simple beat, but he's really just talking to us about himself and like if he didn't chase music, what he could have been. And, you know, it's kind of cool. He kind of makes it sound like, sound like if he hadn't chased music, he would have been a terrible person, would have been a deadbeat. And the people around him would have suffered too because, you know, they're not getting the riches that he has now because he didn't pursue music. Kind of an interesting look at it. Um, the last lines kind of bring it all together. He says, uh, he, like, if he would have stayed in the streets, he says, um, I probably miss my daughter, or I probably miss my mom's birthday, my daughter a hoe, because the man of the house ain't the man no more. It's kind of kind of clever. I gave it an 8.1. Very good song. Very good storytelling. Kind of more up to par with what I expect from Schoolboy Q. And now, talking about up to par with Schoolboy Q, we got this next one, which is actually produced by Kade, uh, Kendrick Lamar, which is cool. It's called Chopsticks, featuring Travis Scott. And it's like super commercial, man. It's like they were trying to make a radio hit with this, and it's mainly because of the beat and, you know, Travis Scott, that's just kind of his thing. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm not a huge fan of it. I was when it first came out, but it just, like, there's no substance to it. When you listen to Schoolboy Q, you expect some substance you expect him to be saying something to you and this song isn't it man it still gets a decent rating though i gave it a 7.2 because you know it is a fun song occasionally but if you're actually just sitting there and trying to listen to schoolboy q it's not a good representation of him track four num num juice this one is hype also but it's it's also starting to kind of slip back for me this is a couple of my buddy's favorite song off the album uh kendrick lamar also helped produce this one so that's kind of cool. Oh, and so did Baby Keem. Baby Keem helped produce Num Num Juice as well. Uh, it's kind of got like an eerie beat. Uh, the background bells are kind of like just weird sounding. Uh, it kind of gives you like a an uneasy feeling when they switch because I watched this video about it and it's like we we expect to hear like fours when beats switch. Like when you hear like the do, 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 like that type of thing it's like fours usually it's not threes and he switches it in threes so it sounds weird and off and you know that's kind of what he's going for for it though so i i get where he's coming from i gave num num juice a 7.9 it's a good overall hype song and then we go into track five drunk featuring black i really love black i i'm gonna get another i'm gonna get a black vinyl probably east atlanta love letters i'm not sure um but either way, we're going to be doing some Black in the future. Does he do well on this track, though? Mm, I expect more from Black. He kind of lacked. It was a little lazy. Um, lazy is probably not the best word, but that's, that's how I would describe it. He sounds a little lazy in this. You know, he's not as good as what he normally does. He's kind of just, like, mumbling through his verse in a way. He doesn't actually, like, show you that he can sing like he can. 
So, you know, that kind of sucks. It's still a good song, though, overall. Um, and again, Schoolboy is flexing what, like, the money is allowing him to do. So, it's a fun song, 7.7. .7. And now, I do want to mention that when Schoolboy was interviewed about this album, he said that he is trying to make it more happy, more fun, because he is a lot happier with himself now, you know, with the riches that he has, with what music has allowed him to do. He's a lot happier. He's happy being a dad. You know, he's he's found a good spot in life, and he's trying to show it through the music. And, you know, he kind of does it throughout by saying, like, this is what could have happened to me, but look where I am now. And it kind of is a running theme throughout it. And, you know, this song doesn't really show you that. Track 6, Lies, featuring Ty Dolla Sign and YG. This is a very good song. Baby Keem helped produce this one as well. A lot of fun to it. Ty Dolla Sign, if you throw him on any hip-hop song and have him do the chorus, it's it's going to hit. Like He's just got it, man. So Ty Dolla Sign does his thing. I think YG does awesome, too. I'm not a huge YG fan. He's got a couple of really good songs, though. His verse is a little clever. Um, and you know, he just kind of rides what, uh, the landscape that schoolboy set out for him. Schoolboy's got this interesting kind of flow where it's like a little do 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 And you know, it's kind of interesting. And I think YG does a good job of kind of taking the template that schoolboy put out and using it in his best ability. He doesn't add anything to the song, but he doesn't take away from the song. It's just like kind of another layer, which is nice. I gave lies an eight and then we go on to track seven. 5200 and it's very hype you know this beat kind of feels like it could have been in black panther which is interesting to me just because of the little uh i don't even know how to describe it or what instrument it even really is or is supposed to be mimicking in the background but it's a very interesting interesting sound to it uh kendrick is in the background and at the beginning um i don't know if he i don't think he helped produce this one and i should mention that in uh drunk he is also in the middle, right before Black starts going, you hear Hold Up, and that's Kendrick. You can just tell. You know his voice if you're a Kendrick fan. So he's also in 5200, and he does the background vocals and stuff like that. And, you know, Q does his thing. He's flexing about his riches again, and he does truly sound happy in this song, which is cool. We want to see Schoolboy be happy. He's a great guy. He seems like a great guy. I don't know. 5200 gets an 8.2, and then we go into track 8, Black Folk. And um, it's kind of an interesting beat. I wrote on here that it kind of sounds like Mario 64, which if you guys know, you know, one of the GOAT games. Um, it's actually very interesting. I pulled a couple a couple lines from, actually, I didn't even pull the lines. I just kind of explained what the lines mean. But he's essentially saying that, like, he could have been a basic street dude. And, you know, if he hadn't chosen to pursue music, you know, the people around him would have struggled. Like I said, this is a running theme throughout this album. And... He's kind of just like, also, I don't know the right way to bet the best way to put this really, but he's also saying that like, there are a lot of dudes out there that do the gangbanging stuff. And, you know, if they were to focus on something other than that, something they're actually passionate about, like music, like maybe athletics, maybe they want to be a doctor, maybe they want to be a therapist, you know, if they really truly focused on that, they would be great at it. And, you know, that's kind of a, a sad reality that we live in. There are a lot of brilliant people out there that just don't try. You see what I'm saying? So Black, Folks get it, uh, Black Folk gets an 8.1. It's a really good song. And if you don't know it, like it's, he's, it's, it's kind of short, but he does his thing on it. Track 9, Floating, featuring 21 Savage. Um, you know, the piano, like I said earlier, there's a little bit of an off-put putting this to some of these uh, beats and this one's no different there's a piano in the background and you know it, it does right for the song but at the same time it's kind of weird and 21 does his thing he's been getting a lot better recently from when he first started when he first started I I couldn't stand him I really couldn't I was like this guy is not that good why is everyone so hype on him but he's been growing on me recently and he's actually becoming in my opinion a better rapper a better artist overall um, but this song doesn't really do it for me, and honestly, if I go back and I re-rank these, this song will probably get a worse rating. The more and more I listen to it, the more it's just kind of... Mm. Again, lazy is probably not the right word, but compared to what we normally get from Schoolboy, it's kind of lazy. So, I gave that one a 7.4. It's still a solid song. But then Track 10 is a very good song. We got Dangerous featuring Kid Cudi. 
and you know it's a very spooky type of beat it's off-putting again like i said and there's uh the whole chorus essentially is kid cuddy saying i'm feeling dangerous i'm feeling nauseous and then i wrote down on here that like the beat kind of sounds nauseous in its own right like it's it's a really weird beat but it works i don't know how to explain it um so i did write down a couple other quotes from it because it is a very interesting song like i was saying schoolboy at the very beginning or not at the very beginning but to start off one of his verses he says i took a, or to end one of his verses he says i took a pill and it swallowed me whole and you know he's just kind of showing you like where he's at in that moment he's doing some drugs and he also says flying ain't flying when you're stuck on your ass and it seems like when, you know, when you watch a, a portrayal of somebody popping pills, unless it's like a specific hype pill type of thing, he's probably talking about Xanax or something like that in here. It makes you zone out. And he says, flying ain't flying if you're stuck on your ass. And that's what's going to happen. You know, you're just going to be sitting there on your ass, like, just not even able to do the stuff you normally would. I don't know personally, but from portrayals, yeah, it gets you stuck. So then, Dave Dangerous and 8.4. It's it's a it's a good solid song. I think Kid Cudi doing the chorus works. You know, and we got track 11, Die with Him. Uh, this song is very hype, and I I didn't really write a whole lot on it. All I have to say is that it's very hype, and it's catchy, and it's it's a good schoolboy song. I gave that an eight. Track 12, Crash. Now this is gonna be a kind of long explanation right here this song is awesome this was my favorite one coming into it and no surprise it still is that's how it usually works with the newer albums if it's my favorite going in it probably still will be my favorite when we're done with this so now that you know that let's talk about it <clears throat> i feel like it's a little different for q to do something like this but he does a great job with it um and like i mentioned you know he was talking about how this album is like kind of a growth to where he is now and kind of a reflection of like being a father and all that um and he's got a couple lines in here where he's straight up like speaking to younger artists and he says you buy a chain but won't buy no land that hashtags say desperate i'm kicking game for these young because one day they one day they'll meet my daughter and when you put it like that you know it makes a lot of sense because a lot of the dudes bubbling up right now are very young and i don't know how old his daughter is really but she's got to be probably double digit age wise now like 10 maybe i'm not like again i shouldn't speculate but either way i totally get what he's saying and it makes a lot of sense he's trying to like kind of like he says i'm kicking game for for the youngins and it's kind of interesting the more and more you listen to it the more and more you see he goes from like i was getting to a certain point then i crashed and then it just keep bringing me up. Um, I believe he also says in this song um, something to the effect of who knew a loss would teach you so much or something like that. Either way, Crash, great song, 8.7. Then we go into track 13, Water featuring Lil Baby. Um, it's a quick flex, but it is by far not... It's probably the worst song on this album. It's not a terrible song, but I feel like Lil Baby's verse isn't that great. Lil Baby, again, he's been... He's been getting better and better and better the more he releases stuff. So this is one of his earlier releases. And, you know, he does all right, but it's, it's, mm, nah, you got a seven. And then the final track, track 14, we got attention. And all pun intended, it got my attention. I honestly must have just been lacking every time I listened to this song. But, you know, he's talking about his accomplishments and, like, what it took for him to get there. And... You know, he talks about how he dropped out and he started doing the gang stuff. And, you know, people were probably looking at his mom like, oh, another single mom with a deadbeat kid, which, you know, that kind of sucks. And he's like kind of going through what it took for him to finally get off his ass and start making music and start taking it seriously, which, you know, it's a very good song. I like the way he tells it. Uh, the lyrics in it are awesome. Beat is it fits perfectly so attention gets an eight and a half it is it is an awesome song honestly so overall all of that said this album as a whole gets a 7.87 solid album not much complaints about it except for you know um water little baby could have done better uh drunk black could have done better in my opinion and gang gang if it was just tied into tales that would be a very good song it's just a little too short. 
So the worst ratings are Gang Gang, Water, and then the best rating is Crash. So overall, we get an average of 7.87, solid average, good album. So how does it sound on vinyl? It sounds fine. You get another 7.87 for that. For the artwork, it's the same as what we see on digital. Set down my microphone. Same as what we see on digital, but I do appreciate these pictures right here, kind of showing you where he's from. Like we got uh, 52nd Street School, which if you know, 51st and Fig. It's not that far from 52nd, I got to imagine. Um, so, you know, that stuff is kind of cool. I gave that a six just because it's like a little a little nod to like where he's from. We get to see a little bit. Um, but the disc, though, the disc, though, first of all, the cover is kind of cool. I don't have any other ones that have a black cover like this. Most of them are white or they have like a decoration on them. So does it make the disc look cool? No, nope. it's just a black disc. So it gets a five on that. So overall this album and before i even say it i'm gonna repeat myself don't take the vinyl review score to heart if you're only trying to find out if you like this album or not the average of a 7.87 that tells you that it is a solid album but with it only having a black disc not a whole lot of extra stuff for the artwork that drops its score down to a overall 6.69 that's about where a lot of these albums are sitting. It makes sense. It's because of the black disc. It's because of the not having like an extra poster in it and stuff like that. But I got this album because I like this album. That's I'm going to have to keep reiterating myself on this, I feel like. But, you know, what else can I say? Great album, Crash Talk by Schoolboy Q. Go check it out. If you haven't, favorite song on it is Crash. Second favorite is Attention go check it out it's a great song and if you like this video why don't you drop me a like it's super easy for you it helps me out and you know if you are kind of hyped about what i've been doing feel free to subscribe i'm not gonna force your hand to but go ahead and do it and uh you know we got a couple more interviews coming out i'll spin this wheel and uh, we'll find out what we're doing next thank you guys for watching I forgot something you guys can't get rid of me that easily um so i meant to mention i think i mentioned before though um so you know how spotify and apple music they have lyrics and you can look up the lyrics well you know i utilize that and spotify lyrics trash they're awful but i know that apple music gets their lyrics straight from the source because and i'll add a screenshot to further explain but every h that is in any word whether it's what when, where, why, how, you know, whatever it is, the H is always capitalized. It doesn't matter if it's the last letter, the middle letter, it doesn't matter where it is, it's always capitalized. It's a schoolboy Q thing for those who are fans, he always spells it capital S, C, capital H, O, O, L, B, O, Y, capital Q. Well, there's a space, but you, you get what I'm saying. Either way, I thought that was kind of an interesting tidbit that I forgot to mention, so I gotta put that in. Again? Thank you guys for watching.